Good evening. Um, we will begin with the U.S. Representative for, 18th, for the 18th Congressional District. Running for U.S. Representative of the 18th District are Supervisor Peter Hernandez and Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren. We will begin tonight with one minute for uh, 30 seconds for introductions. You will begin with Representative Lofgren. Uh, thank you so very much. First, let me thank um, Benito Link for holding this forum. I remember fondly our forum in the primary. Uh, I uh, am currently the representative of the 19th Congressional District, um, but as the districting commission has changed it to a much bigger district, I've been coming down to San Benito and Monterey uh, very frequently, and thank you so much for war warmly welcoming me, and 30 seconds goes in a hurry. I can see that my time is now up. Thank you, Representative Lofgren. Uh, Supervisor Hernandez, you will have 30 seconds. Thank you. My name is Peter Hernandez, and I'm running for Congressional District 18. I'm currently the chair of the San Diego County Board of Supervisors. I've shown my passion for local control, representation, and willingness to challenge the burdens placed on my constituents. I've seen the devastation that's come from a large, bloated, wasteful, and meddling government. Miss, is that it? No. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Did I hear a no or a yes? No, no. Oh, okay. Sorry. Threw me off. Ms. Lofgren's uh, record has proven to be 100% on board with the Biden agenda that has been disastrous to our nation while getting involved in the daily lives of hardworking Americans. It's time we retire out of control government. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Hernandez. We will now begin with the first question. About 10,000 residents live in San Benito County, but work in Santa Clara County. In what ways could you improve public transportation and, be and bring tech business here? We will begin with Supervisor Hernandez with one minute. So when it comes to uh, tech business or any kind of industry to come in into uh, our district, basically, we need to open up the economy. We need to strengthen opportunities for jobs. We're dealing with a, the high cost of gas and inflation, right? We're dealing with the negative impacts of the last two years of shutdowns, which has basically eliminated 20,000 businesses in California. If we truly want to be innovative, uh, then we need to give the opportunity for the innovators themselves to be the participants in this process, right? I don't believe government solves problems. It's supposed to facilitate solutions, and that's where I believe the people themselves are the ones that could restore or bring uh, the, the ag and tech businesses into our, into our community. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Lofgren, you will have one minute. Uh, well, first, on transportation, I've heard from all of you that uh, 25 needs to be improved. And in, uh, when I was on the Board of Supervisors in Santa Clara County, I led an effort uh, to build Highway 85 between Cupertino and San Jose and to build Highway 237. I actually know how to do that. And I would like to work with local leaders here to make sure that that gets done. I know it's possible to do. In terms of uh, tech innovation, you know, I've represented Silicon Valley for quite some time. And you need innovation and entrepreneurs, but you also need uh, an environment that allows those entrepreneurs uh, to be successful. Uh, the CHIPS and Science Act, which we, the Congress recently approved, has funding for innovation hubs, which we believe will be very helpful for smaller communities to provide a platform for innovators uh, to be successful, as well as bringing in venture capital. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Lofgren. Now for question two. San Benito County represents about a tenth of the district. How will you represent it despite the comparatively low population and fewer votes? We will begin with Representative Lofgren. Well, I, I believe that uh, everybody deserves representation in the Congress. I mean, not only people who vote for me, but people who don't vote for me. And one of the things that I've enjoyed is coming down to San Benito County and getting to know the fabulous people who live here. Um, whether it's San Juan or Hollister, I have two staffers 
uh, who live in Hollister, and I expect to be down here uh, quite a bit. I have been down here uh, very often uh, since the districts were changed, and I expect to continue to do this. You know, at this stage in my career, I didn't dream that I have the opportunity to, to learn and to meet an entirely new group of people and to learn from them. It has been a marvelous experience for me, and I'm grateful to all of you who've taken time to go through what the issues are, to educate me about the things that your community needs. It's really been a delight. So I look forward to doing that. Obviously, tomorrow I have to fly back to Washington uh, for a hearing on Thursday. It's not, I can't be down here every day because I do have a job in Washington, but I know that we will have a great experience together. Thank you so much. Thank you, Representative Lofgren. Uh, First Supervisor Hernandez now. Thank you. So um, representation is literally what I've lived. Like I mentioned, the last two years, that's what I fought for, for the representation for the small business community, uh, for, for the families, and ultimately the children when it came down to the shutdowns, right, making sure that they actually had an opportunity for education and our businesses had an opportunity to be able to thrive as a business, right, and the district in and of itself. But when you look at representation, when it comes to the majority of this district, you have a brand, three brand new counties ultimately to be included into the old district, the old 19, where it's majority rural, it's Latino, it's middle class, it's agricultural. They're very dispersed counties, right? They're separate. There's a small pockets of cities all spread out. I'm, I'm ultimately the one that's, that's ultimately hungrier. Uh, I, I'm younger. I'm obviously ready to fight for this district. I want to make sure that we... Uh, put the energy into unifying that district, strengthening what it means uh, for the Latino voter to understand the outcomes of these decisions, right? I know there's typically a low, low turnout during an election cycle. I am the Congressional District 18. My goal would be to educate the district, to engage the district, teach them ultimately what it means for their voice to count in this, in this civic process, right? Congressional District 18 is exactly what I'm gonna fight for because I am Congressional District 18. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Hernandez. We will now be moving to our third question. Immigration issues remain unsolved. Why is it so difficult, and what suggestions do you have to solve them? We will begin with Supervisor Hernandez with one minute. So immigration has been an ongoing issue. It hasn't been solved in the last two Democrat administrations. And ultimately what that means is because this has become a political issue every election cycle. The reality is, is we need to fix immigration. But if we really truly care about immigration, we have to strengthen what American citizenship, right? We can't devalue it. We have to make sure that it means something, right? And just the same, we have to also close our borders or at least strengthen the opportunity for our, our communities to basically to preserve the interest of the American population, but obviously fix immigration to where you open up the opportunity for folks like even DACA to be able to stay here, right? We're not gonna have that solution with a, with a partisan mindset. We have to make sure that we unify, right? There's, there's a, a four, 435 house seats across the, across the country. That means we need to bring the majority of those seats to agree on an immigration policy that actually has a long-term benefit and impact to the to the, ultimately to the preservation of the country, but by default to be very much friendly to, to the immigrants that are coming here because they wanna enjoy the beauty and the benefits of what it means to be an American. That by default means we preserve the interest of this country. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Hernandez. Representative Lofgren. I think uh, immigration has been key to the prosperity and development of our country. Everyone who's here, either is an immigrant or is the child or grandchild or great-grandchild, we're all from somewhere else except for the Native Americans. We need to update our immigration laws that are basically uh, are in the same format as they were in 1965. No wonder it's not working that well in 2022. I chair the Immigration Subcommittee and I've pulled together bipartisan groups uh, to reach consensus on bills in the House, most notably the Farm Workforce Modernization Act that was supported by the United Farm Workers Union and the Western Growers and Farm uh, Bureau. That's in the Senate. Unfortunately, and here's a sad truth, although here in America, Republicans and Democrats agree as voters, 
The Republicans in the House and Senate have made this a partisan issue. They will not approve uh, reform measures that would clean up a disorderly situation at the border. I believe we can do better. Thank you, Representative Lofgren. Now each candidate will have 45 seconds to respond to any of the points brought up by the other candidate. We will begin with Representative Lofgren. Well, I just would like to say, you know, I, I was listening to Mr. Hernandez about his desire to educate the people of this district. I'd like to put it a different way. I'm, I am appreciating the education I am getting from the people who live in this district about the issues that face them, the solutions that they are thinking of, and how I might assist. Many of the challenges that you face are not for the federal government to decide. I know there's some local ballot measures. That's for you all to sort out. But for your representatives at, in the federal and state level, the question is how can we get resources to implement uh, the decisions that you make? I've been successful in that my whole life. Uh, I have uh, supported, for example, today, uh, our, with a million dollar allocation to San Jose PD, we can do this together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Lofgren. Supervisor Hernandez. Thank you. <clears throat> so um, to clarify, the Farmworker Modernization Act basically creates a new CAW designation, which ultimately it, it creates supposedly a stabilizing of the workforce, but the reality is, is it, it also has taxpayer-funded attorneys. It creates a massive liability for the business, um, for, for the farm, you know, ultimately the farmer, and, uh, and by default, it creates an opportunity for the cost of goods, ultimately the food production to increase, right? It, by default, prices out the, the small family farms. The reality is, is it's gonna authorize class action lawsuits and mandatory damages up to $500,000 at the end of the day, Farm workers understand that this is a disaster. Last thing is E-Verify in and of itself is gonna increase cost also, and it's also, it's definitely not Time. supported by the farmers that I've been talking to and I've been endorsed by the Monterey Farm Bureau. Thank you, Supervisor Hernandez. We will now be having closing statements. Each candidate will have 30 seconds. We will begin with Supervisor Hernandez. As a proud Latino, I've been endorsed by Luis Arreguin, the third candidate in the race, who, by the way, is a Democrat. Also, many electeds, the Monterey Farm Bureau, the Salinas Chamber of Commerce, Public Safety, like the Narc Narcotic Officers Association, and the Santa Clara Police Officers Association. I've seen the breakdown of a top-down mindset with the single-party rule in our halls of Congress. From inflation, crime, to out-of-control spending, and fentanyl, leading, the leading cause of death amongst folks between 26 and 44 years old. I was elected to serve Time. in the... I'll, I'll just say this. I know that we can bring people together and have a better country. You know, our diversity is our strength, but unity is our power. We did that when we brought growers and farm worker unions together. We can do that in every community. We can stand up to extremism and make sure that our country is true to its constitution and grabs the beautiful free future that we know we all want to enjoy whether it's women's health Time. or anything else. Thank Time. you very much. Thank you.